and welcome everyone this is priyanka and in this session we are going to talk about classification of solutions before talking about classification of solutions let's first try and understand the term solutions now solutions as we all know is the mixture of two or more than two components now these two components can be categorized into two parts the component can either be called as a solute or it can be a solvent now let's try and understand this concept with the help of an example assume that we've taken 100 g of sugar and 1 liter of water i'm asking you to make a solution out of it now since sugar is present in relatively less amount is it is going to be called as solute and the water present here is present in relatively larger amount and hence it will be called as the solvent now that we are clear with the concept of solute and solvent let's move on to the next classification which is based on the number of phases present in the solution now based on the number of phases present in the solution the solutions are classified into two types the solution can be either called as a homogeneous solution or it can be called as a heterogeneous solution now let's try and understand the first word which is homogeneous now the first word that you see here is homogeneous let's break down this word into two parts homo means one or uniform and the second term which is genius means phase so wherever you see one uniform phase throughout the solution you are going to call that solution as a homogeneous solution as you can see there is milk being added in water once this solution is ready you can see there is only one uniform phase throughout the mixture and hence that type of solution is going to be called as homogeneous solution as you can see in the second picture oil is being added in water once this mixture is stabilized you can still see there are two different layers present in the solution and hence this is going to be called as heterogeneous solution hetero as in multiple or more than one and hence wherever you see more than one phase present in the solution that is going to be called as heterogeneous solution the example is oil added in water now let's have a look at the classification of solution based on the size of solute particle present in the solution based on that the mixtures are classified into three different categories the first one is called as coarse mixture or suspension now let's try and understand this type of mixture in this type of mixture the size of solute particle is large how much it will be greater than 1 micrometer which is 10 raised to minus 6 meter now since the size of particle is so large this type of mixture is going to be a heterogeneous mixture the simplest example that you can take is some sand added in water now what happens when sand is added in water since the sand particles are so heavy that they settle down at the base and hence there are two different layers which are visible in this mixture and hence coarse mixture or suspension is a heterogeneous mixture let's have a look at the second category of mixture which is called as colloidal mixture now this is a very interesting category wherein the size of solute particle ranges from 1 nanometer to 1 micrometer now this type of solution with your naked eyes you can't make out the difference between solute and solvent particles even with some microscope you can't make out the difference between solute and solvent only when you use some high power microscope then you only you can categorize solute and solvent into two different phases now let's try and understand with the help of an example human blood is a colloidal mixture what is happening here is we have a solvent which is water and there are wbcs rbcs present in the water and hence that becomes a heterogeneous mixture colloidal mixtures are heterogeneous mixtures let's have a look at the final category of mixture which is two solution of which we are interested in this topic so two solutions we are going to study in detail in this chapter now two solutions are the solutions in which the size of solute particle is less than 1 nanometer that means that with even high power microscope you can't make out the difference between solute and solvent particles the simplest example that you can consider is salt or sugar added in water now depending on the state of matter present in the solution of solute and solvent particles the solutions are going to be classified in nine different categories let's have a look at each one of them in detail so first we are going to study solid solutions now you need to understand what exactly do we mean by solid solutions solid solutions are the solutions wherein the solvent is present in solid state and the solute can be present in 
either solid, liquid or gaseous state. Let us have a look at the first type which is solid and solid type of solution. The simplest example that you can consider for this is any kind of alloy. Now what are alloys? Alloys are the mixtures of metals. Now as you know metals are present in solid state when you have two metals combined like you can see there is a bronze vessel present in the picture which is a solid and solid type of solution. So let us have a look at the next category that is liquid and solid type of solution. Now in this the simplest example that you know is mercury based alloys which are also called as amalgams. So when you go to a dentist for your capillary filling what he does is he adds little bit of silver amalgam which is AGHG. Now that becomes a liquid and solid type of solution. So the final type of solid solution is gas and solid type of solution. The simplest example that you can imagine is in your organic chemistry you need a lot of reactions wherein hydrogen gas is supposed to be adsorbed on some surface. That surface is generally platinum or palladium surface which is solid in state. Now, so basically what is happening is gas is getting absorbed on the surface of solid that becomes an example of gas in solid type of solution or another example that you can consider is pumice stone. Now let us have a look at liquid solutions. So now let us revise what are liquid solutions. Liquid solutions are the solutions wherein solvent is present in liquid state. Now let us start with the first type of liquid solution which is solid in liquid type of solution. The simplest example that you can imagine for this is salt or sugar added in water. Now the next type of liquid solution is liquid added in liquid which is the example you can consider is ethanol added in water. Both of these components are in liquid state and that becomes liquid and liquid type of solution. Now the final type of liquid solution is gas added in liquid solution. Now example you can consider we all drink aerated drinks wherein carbon dioxide which is gas is dissolved in liquid and hence that becomes an example of gas in liquid type of solution. Now let us have a look at the final category of solution which is gaseous solutions. Let us revise it again. What are gaseous solutions? Gaseous solutions are the solutions wherein the solvent is present in gaseous state. Now the first example that you can see is solid dissolved in gas. The first example that you can see is smoke wherein dust particles are present in gas or air. Now another example is iodine present in air. The next type of gaseous solution is liquid present in gas that is liquid and gas type of solution. The example you can consider chloroform in nitrogen gas or simply moisture wherein small droplets of water are present in air. The final type of gaseous solution is gas added in gas type of solution. The simplest example that you can imagine is air that we all are breathing which is a mixture of different gases like oxygen and nitrogen. Now depending on the number of components present in solution, the solutions are categorized into three types, binary solution, ternary solution and quaternary solution. Now let us have a look at each type of solution in detail. The first type of solution that we are studying is binary solution. The word itself is quite self-explanatory. The word binary means two. Wherever you see two components present in a solution, that type of solution is going to be called as binary solution. For an example, you can see when you add glucose and water, there are two components in total, glucose and water. That means this solution is going to be called as binary solution. Now let us understand the second type of solution which is ternary solution. What is happening in case of ternary solution is we are adding two different solutes in one solvent. Let us assume you are adding glucose as well as sucrose in this case. So you have two solutes and one solvent. In total you have three components and hence I am going to call it as a ternary solution. The final category that we have is quaternary solution. Let us understand the word quaternary which basically means four. Now whenever you see four components present in a solution that is going to be called as a quaternary solution. Assume that in this case you have added glucose, sucrose as well as some urea in water. So in all you have three solutes and one solvent that means four components in total and hence that is going to be called as a quaternary solution. With this we have completed the classification of solutions. I hope you found this video useful. If you did please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel. Thank you for watching.